Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Pam Dent, CAR 2022 president. On behalf of CAR, I would like to welcome you to the CAR 2023 installation of officers and directors meeting. We are fortunate to be joined by members, Realtor Association colleagues, and peers from around the nation, as well as local industry and community partners. We are extremely grateful to our sponsors for stepping up and helping us provide this monumental program. This evening is brought to you courtesy of presenting sponsor, Virginia Housing, event sponsors, Embrace Home Loans, and Farm Credit of the Virginias. We value the professionalism, service, and support of our affiliates to CAR and its members. I would like to say that I truly believe that when you become a member of our association, you are reaching for something higher in both profession and purpose. While we may work for different companies, we support each other and our community through both the good times and the bad. Inevitably, when a group of committed professionals comes together in this way, we form bonds of mutual respect, friendship, and caring with others in our association. Although I cannot believe this year has come and gone and I will be ending my presidency this evening, I am extremely excited to pass the gavel to our incoming president, S. Lisa Herndon, who will be the first African-American president of CAR. What a wonderful moment. If you were able to join us for this morning's December general membership meeting, you were fortunate to hear the struggles, triumphs, and inspiration from four esteemed individuals in our influential first panel. We were joined by First African American incoming CAR president and moderator, S. Lisa Herndon. Fourth woman CAR president, Pat Widholm. And first woman CEO of CAR, Deborah Van Ersel. We were able to hear from each change maker and understand the steps that they took towards changing the norms of standards operations, and behavior in our local real estate industry, paving the way for others to follow in their footsteps. It was a phenomenal way to set the stage for this milestone in CARS history this evening. Before we get our installation underway, I want to highlight a few of our association successes in 2022 by the numbers. CAR raised over $13,000 for the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank in the month of November, which was matched by another $10,000 donation from Sally and Peter Neal. This effort is providing over 92,144 meals to our neighbors this holiday season. Wow. The Public Affairs Master Group received a $25,000 National Association of Realtors Consumer Advocacy Grant, which will inform and encourage the public to learn more about the proposed zoning changes for the city of Charlottesville by visiting SeavillePlansTogether.com. The Charlottesville Young Professionals Network, or YPN, takes 75% of their revenue from each event and donates to a local nonprofit. A total of over 17,000, a total of over $12,500 
was donated to various charities this year. Carr had 562 Realtors Political Action Committee or RPAC investors. RPAC works for realtors to advance public policies and candidates that build strong communities, protect property and home ownership interests, and promote a vibrant business environment. The Professional Development Master Group enhanced our speaker selection process and deepened our pool of instructors to provide 478 hours of education delivered both in person and via Zoom. We received a record number of ballots as part of the newly implemented Board of Officers and Directors election process to be more inclusive and engaging, 215 to be exact. The Charlottesville YPN helped to fulfill 150 local Salvation Army angels this holiday season. The Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council promoted the realtor profession and the realtor in the community during the 37th Piedmont Community College Job Fair. Carr Foundation has been in existence for 13 months. Its mission is to be an effective mechanism for realtors to donate their talent, time, and resources to impact, sustain, and support community initiatives. We had 12% of the membership volunteer their time, energy, and expertise on various master groups, project teams, councils, and committees that executed the successes we are highlighting tonight. If you would like to volunteer in 2023, please complete a volunteer form by Friday, December 16th. We have 10 participants currently enrolled in the second Pat Jensen Leadership Academy class. These members will be encouraged to take further movement into leadership roles in the realtor organization at the local, state, and national level. The Communications Master Group encouraged members to volunteer alongside nine community activities, whether that was during a Habitat for Humanity Build Day, outlying county food pantry days, or donating during its American Red Cross blood drive. CAR has, exce has exceeded its 2022 RPAC goals. Therefore, we will receive the National Association of Realtors Triple Crown Award for the eighth consecutive year. Members are reviewing a variety of diversity, equity, and inclusion resources to grow and be mindful of how they speak, behave, and treat one another using the DEI resources webpage created by our DEI Council. Members visit the DEI resources webpage for more than two minutes engaging with all it has to offer. The DEI resources webpage has been so beneficial that it will be published to the public portion of car.com. That way everything can benefit from it, not just our members. I'm extremely proud of all that CAR has accomplished. Concluding my presidency, I was able to recognize two groups for the President's Award, which is given to a person or group who has shown loyalty and support in advancing the objectives of CAR. This year, I gave this prestigious award to our wonderful CAR staff and also to each member of my executive committee. It has been an absolute honor to serve as president, and I honestly can't wait to see what next year has in store for all of us. Let us embrace 2023. 
At this time, we will move on to the installation ceremony, starting off with our 2023 officers and directors. It is my pleasure to welcome Barbara McMurray, CAR past president, to perform the respective oaths for our incoming leadership. Barbara, I hand the meeting over to you. Thank you, Pam, and thank you so much for all of your good work this year. We really appreciate it. First, we will induct the 2023 Board of Directors, Board of Officers and Directors, and then we'll install the president separately. As I read the following names, I request these members to join me on the stage. The following members have been newly elected as officers and directors. Ann Burroughs, president-elect. Josh White, treasurer. Kyle Olson, Director. Candace Vanderlind, Director. Sharon Merrick, Director. And Aaron Searcy, Director. Now let me announce the returning officers and directors. Pam Dent, not so fast. <laughs> Immediate past president. I want you to stay here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Reeves Bailey, director. Woody Fincham, director. And Amanda Spagone, director. Don't hurry, we'll wait. It says right here, Barbara, to wait until all members are on the stage. It is assumed by your acceptance of your offices in the board of directors for the Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors, that you are in full accord with the objectives of this local association, the Virginia Realtors and the National Association of Realtors. These objectives are to encourage and foster high ethical standards in our profession, to take an active interest in the welfare of your city, county, and state to develop service as the basis of worthy enterprise, to interchange ideas, business methods, and transactions with other realtors, and to oppose harmful legislation and to strive for legislation beneficial to real estate and property ownership. The obligations are to attend meetings regularly and to fill your respective offices in a manner which reflects positively on the Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors, on the state and the national associations, and on yourselves. To make the decisions your office requires and to see that the various committees perform their duties as delegated. I'll now administer the oath of office. Please raise your right hands. Do each of you solemnly and sincerely promise that you will administer the office to which you have been elected to the best of your ability and judgment in conformity with the bylaws of this association? 
that you will observe and enforce the Realtor Code of Ethics, that you will uphold and support your local, state, and national associations, that you will uphold and support the Virginia Real Estate Board and its enforcement of the license law, that you will and all of your acts be governed by the principles of honesty, justice, and fair play, and in every manner possible, endeavor to promote and safeguard the best interests of our state, the high purpose of your association and the welfare of its members. If you so subscribe, please answer by saying, I do. I do. Thank you. By virtue of the authority conferred upon me, I do proclaim that you are officially installed to the office to which you have been elected. Officers and directors, thank you, and you may return to your seats. I'd also like to share that Georgia Lindsay, Keith Davis, and Jessica Russo weren't able to be here this evening. Therefore, I installed these directors earlier this week. All right, before I ask the past presidents to join me to pass the gavel, I wanted to share a few words about S. Lisa Herndon. And first of all, I just wanted to say hello to all of her family and friends, and uh, thank you for including me at your table. She's going to introduce everyone, but I see some familiar faces. Miss Ava was a little tiny girl when we first worked together with, with uh, Lisa. Well, I've been allocated two minutes, so you all better buckle up because it's going to take longer than that. <laughs> I mean, have you seen, have you seen her resume? It's pages and pages long. Uh, but I think in particular, it's important to note that her service has been extensive and, and, and since her very beginning in the real estate world. But most recently, she's had a lot of impact by working on the 2020 NAR diversity committee. So serving on a national committee is a big old deal. Um, and, and she's done that very well. She also served on the Virginia Association Diversity and Inclusion Presidential Advisory Group, so a PAG group, and that was important work. She served on the Virginia Professional Development Committee in 2021, the political action, and is has been an RPAC trustee, very important work. She served your car board for many years, committees on the board, um, long years of service. She's been involved in multiple leadership academies, including CARS and the Virginia Association. One of her early leadership uh, opportunities came in the Women's Council, and so her Women's Council friends congratulate her as, as she's moved up through leadership. We're all really proud of her. That, that, those are just the highlights. As I say, I've got three pages of items here, and if you'd like to see me after, um, I'll give you the rest. Remember, I've only got two minutes, but those are the highlights. So here's the thing. When athletes make it to the Olympics, or let's say when, when someone makes it to the World Cup team at this point, they always go back and they interview the early coaches. When somebody signs a $300 million contract to play baseball, they go back and they talk to the little league coaches, right? And the, the early day coaches always say, she or he was exceptional from the beginning. That's what they always say. Well, guess what? S. Lisa Herndon was exceptional from the beginning. Um, she was in a principles of real estate class at, at PVCC. And as I always do, 
I asked the class, what brings you to real estate? And there are a lot of reasons. Some people want to be investors. Not everybody's going into real estate. But I've asked numerous classes. Lisa answered, I'm interested in affordable housing for this community. Maybe I can start a foundation to foster housing equity. So I have to tell you that is the first and only time that anyone ever said that as a reason for going into real estate. She said, I want to have a good career. I want to be able to influence this outcome. And um, as I think I said to her, it, what year was that? I don't even remember. Long ago. As I said to her, you know what I said to her? I said, when you start that foundation, I'll volunteer to be on the board. And if she asks any of you to be on that board, I'm looking to you to say yes, because it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful idea. So Lisa was exceptional from the beginning. She was exceptional then, she's exceptional now. When she interviewed for a job at Montague Miller, I asked her, I, I think this must have been a stock question also. I said to her, can you share an example with me of a time in your previous work where something didn't go well? It didn't go the way you planned it. And, and you know, how did you handle it? What did you, what did you learn from it? Well, here was that example. First, you have to understand Lisa worked for Plow and Hearth and the various divisions of Plow and Hearth. She traveled around the country. She taught people how to handle objections, basically. Um, apparently, and this was her example, apparently there was a 1-800-Flowers call that went very, very wrong. Very, very wrong. And she had to handle a situation where a funeral spray was delivered to a wedding party. And the wedding flowers were delivered to the funeral. So I said to myself, self, anybody that can handle that can certainly handle objections in real estate. So she... Um, you know, she had a good background before she started. But would you all stipulate that it's hard to get started in real estate? In, in whatever way you started, it was hard, wasn't it? We all face challenges. But S. Lisa faced flat out racial discrimination that I never did. And the example is still painful for me, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what it was. Lisa got a phone call in our office, and evidently it was a typical sort of interview that went very, very wrong because the caller used racial slurs to describe where he would live and where he wouldn't live and with whom he wanted to live. And um, I just can't understand how you could tolerate a call like that. But Lisa said all of the proper things based on, on fair housing and what we learn about equal service for everybody. And in the face of horrible, horrible words used, she made an appointment for this person to come to our office. And then she came into my office and basically said, now what are we going to do? Um, and so the appointment was set for one o'clock. And I remember I was, I was just beside myself. And you all don't know me very well. I'm not a crier. I cried. I was so angry and I was so upset. And Lisa looked at me and she said, you know what, Barbara? She said, I'm from here. I grew up here. This is not my first time experiencing this. She said, you cannot protect me from the world, but I love that you would try. So we came up with a plan that we were gonna meet this person at one o'clock. The person had an appointment. 
he stood us up. Can you believe it? We, we, had, we had all sorts of things that we were going to say, and it was none of it going to be, it was none of it going to be pl pleasant, but we didn't get to do that. As I said, S. Lisa Herndon was exceptional then, and she is now. I'm so very proud of what she's accomplished, and um, I could almost cry again. So at this time, will all of the past presidents of CAR come up here? And this is really going to be interesting. We're going to organize ourselves chronologically in front of the stage, descending from Pam's presidency. Pam will be on the stairs, and then we will pass the gavel. Past presidents, if you will please remain standing throughout the installation of Lisa and during the passing of the gavel. So, Lisa, would you join me on stage? There's a Okay, you all, don't make me come down there. Oh, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay, Lisa will join me on stage. So we do the we do this we do this Alec we do this before we pass the gavel right yeah. okay can you see her like that's why you say a bow uh, okay uh, oh everybody everybody shift down this way thank you scooch no no I gotta stay here. Okay. Yeah, keep going so we can see Lisa. You stay right, right there. Okay, ready? S. Lisa Herndon, you have been elected to the Office of President for the Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors for 2023. Will you accept this position? If so, please answer, yes, I will. Yes, I will. <laughs> the preamble to the Realtor Code of Ethics states that realtors are zealous to maintain and improve the standards of their calling and share with their fellow realtors a common responsibility for its integrity and honor. Your role as an officer of the Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors places you at the center of this responsibility as a guardian of our profession and of property rights. Your conduct must be a model of the Realtor Code of Ethics. Your knowledge about the real estate industry must be up to date and your commitment and attitude about realtor leadership should be inspiring to those who someday will follow you. Always remember to strike a healthy balance between your realtor responsibilities with those of your business, your health and your family. The integrity and honor you bring to this organization must always be founded on the strength of your business and personal life. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly promise and swear that you will administer the office to which you have been elected to the best of your ability 
and judgment in conformity with the constitution and bylaws of this association. That you will observe and enforce the Realtor Code of Ethics. That you will uphold and support the Virginia license law and applicable rules. That you will actively support the mission and objectives of this association, as well as those of the Virginia Realtors and National Association of Realtors. That you will, in all of your actions, be governed by the principles of honesty, justice, and fair play, and promote and safeguard the best interests of the Realtor Association and the welfare of its membership. Do you so subscribe? If so, please answer, yes, I will. Yes, I will. All right. Um, let's see. So the gavel. Oh, right. If you all, um, <laughs> if you all would pass the gavel, that'd be great. Now, the passing of the gavel carries with it the duties and responsibilities of the presidency of this association. It should always be used judiciously with wisdom, vision, honor, and integrity. Now, I do hereby proclaim you are duly installed into the office of president of this association. Now, um, you stay here. I have you. Yes, it says it says you may return to your seats. But before I leave, I want to give S. Lisa a um, surprise. Something, something that's been important to me, and in passing the gavel, I've decided to pass the gavel that I had as president in 2011, and I want you to have it. Uh, because you remember in the oath, it says, think about the people who come after you, and that's exactly what I'm doing, so it couldn't go to a better person, and I'm very, very proud of you. And I just shut the booklet, so whoever's next is in trouble. Well, how can I follow up with that? Ooh, okay, Barbara, making sure I still have my uh, spot here. <clears throat> Pam, I'm gonna ask you to join me back on the stage. I would like to sincerely thank Pam for her dedication and leadership to the car as car president for the past year. Pam, you have been and have done an extraordinary job leading our association. And we have a few items of appreciation, including a gavel plaque, a past president's pen, and a generous gift card for you to spend however you want to from the downtown mall. <laughs> Thank you again for your service. And I'm going to pin this pin on you, okay? I don't know what it is.
so much easier than you know, there you go thank you i appreciate you all right let's see we have about five more back there she wants all her gifts yes i want my gifts yes yes there's the plaque <laughs> and her gift card there you go thank you thank you very much Thank you all. And I have promised everyone not to look me in the eye because I am not going to cry. Although I'm already sniffling now. First of all, before I get started, I'd like to give praise and honor to my Lord and Savior because without his love and grace, none of this would be possible. So thank you. I'm really going to need a tissue. Can you give me a tissue? They did. Okay. And I haven't even gotten started yet. It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the 2023 installation events of the Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors. I welcome my family, which includes my mother, Barbara, we're sitting at this table. My, my three daughters, Alexandria, standing along the wall with the baby. Angel. Apriya. And my niece, Amber. And my two cousins. Audra and Harriet. And special guests, members who have traveled to support me. I greatly appreciate your support. I would be remiss if I did not pay tribute to my late father. Cecil Woodrow Herndon. for his unconditional love and unwavering support. It is because of him that I am determined to make a difference. Stop looking at my cheerleading picture. <laughs> and to be the change that I want to see in the world, I myself must, I myself must be willing to take action. I would like to take this opportunity to once again congratulate immediate past president, Pam Dent, for a very successful year. She did many things to show her support for me as her successor, and I thank her and caution her that I will be depending on you in the coming year. So you're not getting away. I would also like to congratulate each of the new board members. Our membership has shown their confidence in you and me by electing us to the respective positions. And I look forward to serving with you all. I admire the enthusiasm, energy, and commitment that I already see that you bring to the board. I am fortunate to have a board, members, and staff that are fully committed to the ideas of service around the diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts as we start our journey in 2023. I am honored, proud, and most of all, humbled to be elected president of the Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors. No one becomes the first of anything alone. As the first person of color to hold the office of president of the association, please note that I am not in this position to simply check a box or because of my ethnicity, gender, or race. I am here because my talent was recognized and fostered by mentors who supported and believed in me. My mentors were those who did not look like me because there was no representation of anyone who looked like me. 
in those positions in the association. Representation and inclusion matters within the association and within our surrounding communities. I often find myself reflecting on my journey into CARS leadership and remembering the day that Anita Dunbar walked into my office and said, I think you should run for the board of directors. I'm sure I looked at her as if she had three heads. I just did not think that I would fit into that environment and at that time, the board seemed so far removed from my experience as an agent. There was definitely no one on the board that looked like me. At that time, I honestly wondered if the lack of racial diversity on the board was intentional. But no matter what was racing through my mind, Anita insisted that I keep trying. She truly believed in me and felt that I could bring a different voice to the board and a fresh perspective. Volunteering was not new to me. I had often volunteered within my community and different organizations. Long story short, after multiple attempts, I was finally selected to serve on the board. In addition to Anita, I also want to acknowledge Denise Ramey, she was a supporter from the beginning. It was during her 20, 20, uh, 2013 presidential installation speech and witnessing the passing of the gavel and seeing very limited representation that I decided to start my journey to become CARS president. Dreams do come true. Another acknowledgement I would like to mention was Ann Garner, former CEO of CAR. Whenever possible, she would always make efforts to ensure that I was aware of leadership opportunities and deadlines on local, state, and national levels. She understood the value of diversity, equity, and inclusion within our industry. Oh. And now, Barbara McMurray. What can I not say about this lady? She was lit, she has literally been here for me from the very beginning, starting as my instructor, her and Pat Whittem. Both very inspirational ladies. Barbara has been my mentor, confident. And sometimes what I feel like my psychiatrist during some turbulent and difficult times. I recall an incident, this is not the same one she described. I recalled an incident of blatant racism that was extremely difficult and it broke me to my core. It not only involved me, but also my client. As we do, I held it together, calmed my client and returned to the office. I had already spoken to Barbara on the, on the drive back to the office and she could see that I was visibly upset. As I sat in the chair explaining the incident, I felt my body breaking. As I started to crumble into tears, this was my breaking point. I could no longer hold it together. But that's not the point of the story that I want you to remember. I looked up from my tears to see a warrior. She was mad as hell. Additional words were not needed between us. As I opened the door, to leave and slightly look back and glanced over my shoulder. I remember her, her slowly looking up and saying, don't you worry, I got you, I got your back. And she did, she's a phenomenal woman. And now to the lady who was truly there from the beginning, my mother, Barbara Herndon. <laughs> 
she wasn't expecting them. <laughs> she taught me to be a survivor, strong and independent thinker. But most of all, she taught me to stand in my own truth and to know my worth and to not settle for anything less. I'm grateful for the life lessons, thank you. Please find a mentor, a friend, who fully supports your thoughts and you through the highs and lows of life's journey because challenges are a part of the course. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once stated that faith is taking the step even when you don't see the whole staircase. I say keep stepping. It does get better, I promise. It's great to reflect back and thank the ones who have helped you along the way. Because of their support, I would later go on to serve on a multitude of committees and eventually become the first African-American president for the Women's Council of Realtors Blue Ridge in 2018. The Women's Council was an unquestionable and integral part of my success as a leader. Those women tested me. <laughs> and those ladies continue to support me today. I have continued my leadership journey into the state and national association of realtors. I believe that it is important to share that although I have a passion for service and an innate desire to help create equitable and inclusive change, at no point has my journey ever been about me. It's always been about service to others and a responsibility to help be the change to remove barriers to opportunities found in policy and standards of practice. I have had many bumps along my journey and during times of great frustration and discouragement, I pull on the strengths of my ancestors and an unwavering determination to overcome all obstacles. Having a guide or a plan always helps to visualize the end goal. Our current strategic plan will provide guidance for me while setting and achieving our goals. CARS 2022 through 2024 strategic plan was created intentionally to focus on a mission built on diversity, equity, and inclusion that equips our members to grow as ethical and responsible professionals. Our association is not perfect. We've stumbled and made mistakes along the way, but it will be our actions, not our words, that will prove our commitment to do better. We are an association that continues to support a culture that believes in collaboration, transparency, accountability, integrity, inclusiveness, and diversity. As president of the association, I pledge to prioritize the creation of initiatives that work to remove barriers, policies, and standards of practice that prevent building, the building of a diverse association. I believe that it is vital that we create an understanding of barriers to participation and success within the real estate professional amongst the underrepresented population, which may include barriers to access, education, mentorship, procedural complexities within the association. I believe that by building diverse and inclusive alliances with affiliates, the public, nonprofits, and community partners, 
that it will support our initiative to increase, enable, and utilize and the utilization of diverse real estate professionals in all association activities. I will work with the board of directors, membership, and staff to strengthen member engagement and collaboration. I will support projects that expand volunteer opportunities, recruitment, diversity, and retention of a member and a more inclusive association to ensure that we are innovative in our approach to connecting with the underrepresented members. We will utilize new and expansive channels to communication, volunteer and organizational activities to the broader community. We will be expanding our reach and not simply doing what we have always done. I am committed to, to developing awareness of the real estate profession through varied and frequent communications directed to the underrepresented populations. As president of the association, it is my responsibility to be purposeful and deliberate about lifting others as we rise. I promise to always do my best and to face every challenge with an open mind and an open heart. The Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors is committed to continuing to ensure that our membership is reflective of the communities in which we serve. Through our diversity, equity and inclusion efforts. I am proud to be a realtor. I am more importantly, I am truly proud of the work of our association. And I am committed to continuing to create a legacy of inclusiveness. It tells me to pause right here. <laughs> to conclude this evening's meeting, please enjoy the reception, including food, beverages, and of course, dancing. That's why that dance floor is right there. This is a celebration. We're changing things. And if I need to be the first one to enter the doors to show change, let me be the first one. As president of CAR, I officially adjourn this meeting. Thank you.